Hello family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, the discussion about uh, meditation as it pertains to our current crippling anxiety. Um, I wanted to talk today about a fairly simple concept. Um, in short, that concept is this title, Good Today the idea that uh, meditation practice is good in the immediate. Um, and what exactly that means. So um, in particular, Pali-oriented or Theravadan-oriented uh, meditation practices are given this description that they are good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end. And um, to some extent, this is sort of a recursive definition uh, that the meditation practice is always useful. Um, it also sort of implies that there's some final goal to be achieved, this like perfect enlightenment state that I'm sure we'll never see. <laughs> um, but the, the component that's really relevant to us is this idea of being good, being valuable in the beginning. Um, and the comparison that is often made is to other practices, uh, not meditation usually, which uh, describe themselves as being good later. Um, so there are often various forms um, uh, of activity, not necessarily only religious, right? Um, there are all sorts of activities that we subscribe to and uh, we do them with the intention of later benefit. And the immediacy of the benefit of meditation is one of its sort of strange characteristics. Um, it's not like saving for retirement. It's not like investing in a pension. It's not like investing in your child's education. And it's not like praying to your God um, to say, please let me enter the kingdom of heaven when I die. Um, it's, it's not really like any of those things at all. Um, it is entirely self-referential. Um, so the meditation practice that you engage in is of the mind and for the mind. So you are using your own mind to alter your own mind. This kind of, um, a, in modernity, we would refer to this as neuroplasticity, but um, even in experiments which explore the idea of neuroplasticity, there's often this idea that you need to really work at the activity that's being studied under the experiment. And um, eventually you will see some, uh, the plasticity emerge and a change take place. And that is still true of meditation that ultimately there will be bigger changes and bigger changes over time. Um, but the interesting thing about the changes which occur under uh, meditative states is that they occur immediately. Um, and this is, uh, I believe I've said this before, this is a very useful way to gauge the value of the meditation practices that you're exploring. So if you happen to be exploring Anapan meditation, and uh, today, like many days, I'll put up the links to the videos for installing the app and downloading instructions um, for basic Anapan meditation. No, no frills, no, uh, no fanciness. Um, if you're trying that, that meditation practice should be giving you results immediately, today. Um, to some degree. And so the, the difficulty that we have is engaging um, 
it, to what extent is that true, right? Because we don't have perfect perception, we often end up misevaluating things. So if we're really out of shape and we go for a long bicycle ride or a run that's too much for us, um, our body complains. <laughs> <laughs> and even though the running the, the bicycle might be good for us, our body says, uh, this, is, this is no good. This is not helping me today. And it can be the same with meditation initially, even though it is really helping you initially. Um, it may take two, three weeks of consistent practice before you can say, oh, okay, actually, this one's not that useful. Um, or, oh, okay, this one is actually benefiting me quite a bit. Um, and you will find this of different meditations that some meditations suit you uh, much more than others. I, I've certainly found this in my own experience that there are meditation practices that I have tried and I've taken very seriously. So I've gone on retreats or I have uh, done them regularly for multiple weeks um, and found that they carry little to no benefit at all. Um, and then there are other meditation practices for me, um, specifically Anapan, um, where the effects of Anapana are not necessarily, they're not grandiose, right? Um, I'm not becoming an entirely new person, but I am seeing these small changes in myself um, in my behavior, in the way that I interact with people, um, even in the way that I think. Um, and those changes are, are useful, that my thoughts are more productive, they're not so um, frustrated all the time and not so confused. Um, and if you do notice those sorts of changes in the meditation that you're doing, regardless of whether it's Anapana or not, or whether it's Vipassana or not, or whether it's um, Zazen or, or something else, uh, that, that that's valuable and that you can explore that then further. Um, and you can use this same uh, metric, this same yardstick later on. So this idea that the meditation should be good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end, means that it shouldn't exhaust itself of its utility. You shouldn't sit down to meditate um, you know, two decades into your meditation practice and find, oh, is, now nothing happens. Like, now I'm used to it. <laughs> um, meditation is easy and boring and nothing changes anymore. Um, if that's happening, then unfortunately at that, at that point, um, you should seriously reconsider your meditation practice. Um, and that's a fair thing to do if you need to. But in these earlier stages, uh, it's more valuable to explore and try out different meditation practices and find one that works well for us. Um, I, like I said, I'll put the videos back up again. Um, I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves and I hope that you're taking care of everyone around you and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.